back, let's find out what happens to Stanley and Mr. Sir. It was a long walk back to his hole. Stanley looked out through the haze of heat and dirt and, and at the other boys, lowering and raising their shovels. Group D was the furthest away. He realized that once again he would be digging long after everyone else had quit. He'd hoped he'd finish before Mr. Sir recovered. He didn't want to be out there alone with Mr. Sir. You won't die, the warden said, unfortunately for you. Walking across the desolate wasteland, Stanley thought about his great-grandfather. Not the pig stealer, but the pig stealer's son, and the one who robbed, who was robbed by kissing Kate Barlow. He tried to imagine how he must have felt after Kiss and Kate had left him stranded in the desert. It probably wasn't a whole lot different from the way he himself felt now. Kate Barlow had left his great-grandfather to face the hot, barren desert. The warden had left Stanley to face Mr. Sir. Somehow, his great-grandfather had survived for 17 days before he was rescued by a couple of rattlesnake hunters. He was insane when they found him. When he was asked how he lived so long, he said he found refuge on God's thumb. He spent nearly a month in a hospital. He ended up marrying one of the nurses. No one ever knew what he meant by God's thumb, including himself. Stanley heard a twitching sound. He stopped mid-step with one foot still in the air. A rattlesnake lay coiled beneath his foot. Its tail had pointed upward, rattling. Stanley backed his leg away, then turned and ran. The rattlesnake didn't chase after him. It had rattled its tail to warn him to stay away. Thanks for the warning, Stanley whispered as his heart pounded. The rattlesnake would be a lot more dangerous, dangerous if it didn't have a rattle. Hey, caveman, called Armpit. You're still alive? What'd the warden say? asked X-Ray. What'd you tell her? asked Magnet. I told her I stole the seeds, said Stanley. Good going, said Magnet. What'd she do? asked Zigzag. Stanley shrugged one shoulder. Nothing. She got ma mad at Mr. Sir for bothering her. He didn't like going into the details. If he didn't talk about it, then maybe it didn't happen. He went over to his hole, and to his surprise, it was nearly finished. He stared at it amazed. It didn't make sense. Or perhaps it did, he smiled. Since he had taken the blame for the sunflower seeds, he realized the other boys had dug his hole for him. Hey, thanks, he said. Don't look at me, said X-Ray. Confused, Stanley looked around, from magnet to armpit to zigzag to squid. None of them took credit for it. Then he turned to Zero, who had been quietly digging in his hole since Stanley's return. Zero's hole was much smaller than the others. Mm. Maybe Zero's helping him so that Stanley will help Zero. Okay, we're going to move on to chapter 22. Stanley was the first one finished. He spat in his hole, then showered and changed into his cleaner set of clothes. It had been three days since the laundry was done, so even his clean set was still dirty and smelly. Tomorrow, these would become his work clothes, and his others would be set to be washed. He could think of no reason why Zero would dig his hole for him. Zero didn't even get any of the sunflower seeds. I guess he just likes to dig holes, Armpit had said. He's a mole, Zigzag had said. I think he eats dirt. Moles don't eat dirt, X-Ray pointed out. Worms eat dirt. Hey, Zero, Squid asked. Are you a mole or a worm? Zero said nothing. Stanley never even thanked him, but now he sat on his cot and waited for Zero to return from the shower room. Thanks. He said to Zero as he entered the tent flap. Zero glanced at him, then went over to the crates where he deposited his dirty clothes and towel. Why do you help me? Stanley asked. Zero turned around. You didn't steal the sunflower seeds, he said. So, neither did you, said Stanley. Zero stared at him. His eyes seemed to expand, and it was almost as, as, as if Zero was looking right through him. You didn't steal the sneakers, he said. Stanley said nothing. He watched Zero walk out of the tent. If anyone had x-ray vision, it was Zero. Wait, he called out, then hurried out after him. Zero had stopped just outside the tent, and Stanley almost ran into him. I'll try to teach you to read if you want, Stanley offered. 
I don't know if I can teach you, but I'm not, I'm not that worn out today since you dug a lot of my hole. A smile spread across Nero's face. They returned to the tent where they were less likely to be bothered. Stanley got out his box of stationery and a pen. They sat on the ground. Do you know the alphabet? Stanley asked. For a second, he thought he saw a flash of defiance in Zero's eyes, but then it passed. I think I know some of it, Zero said. A, B, C, D. Keep going, Stanley said. Zero, Zero's eyes looked upward. E, F, said Stanley. G, said Zero. He blew some air out of the side of his mouth. H, I, K, P? H, I, J, K, L, Stanley said. That's right, said Zero. I've heard that before. I don't think I just have it memorized exactly. That's all right, Stanley said. Here, I'll say the whole thing just to kind of refresh your mem memory. Then you can try it. He recited the alphabet for Zero and Zero repeated it without a single mistake. Not bad for a kid who's never seen Sesame Street. Well, I've heard it before somewhere, Zero said, trying to act like it was nothing, but his big smile gave him away. The next step was harder. Stanley had to figure out how to teach him to recognize each letter. He gave Zero a piece of paper and took a piece of paper for himself. I guess we'll start with A. He printed a capital A, and then Zero copied it on his sheet of paper. The paper wasn't lined, which made it more difficult. But Zero's A wasn't bad, just a little big. Stanley told him he needed to write smaller, or else he'd run out of paper real quick. Zero printed it smaller. Actually, there are two ways to write each letter, Stanley said, as he realized this was going to be even harder than he thought. That's a capital A. But usually you'll see a small a. You only have capitals of the begin at the beginning of a word and if it starts at the a beginning of a sentence or if it's a proper noun like a name. Zero nodded as if he understood, but, but Zero knew he had made very little sense to him. He printed a lowercase a and Zero copied it. So there are 52, said Zero. Stanley didn't know what he was talking about. Instead of 26 letters, there are actually 52? Stanley looked at him surprised. I guess that's right. How'd you figure that out? He asked. Zero said nothing. Did you add? Zero said nothing. Did you multiply? That's how many there are, said Zero. Stanley raised and lowered his shoulder. He didn't even know how Zero knew there were 26 in the first place. Did he count them as I recited them? He had Zero write a few more upper and lower case A's, and then he moved on to capital B. This was going to take a long time. Sorry, I lost my spot. Okay. You can teach me 10 letters a day, suggested Zero, five capitals and five smalls. After five days, I'll know them all. Except on the last day, I'll have to do a 12, six capitals and six smalls. Again, Stanley stared at him, amazed that he was able to figure that all out. Zero must have thought he was staring for a different reason because he said, I'll dig part of your hole every day. I can dig for about an hour, then you can teach me for an hour. And since I'm faster at digging anyway, our holes will get done at the same time. And then I won't have to wait for you. Okay, Stanley agreed. As Zero was printing, as Zero was printing his bees, Stanley asked him how he figured out it would take five days. Did you multiply? Did you divide? That's just what it is, Zero said. It's good math, said Stanley. I'm not stupid, Zero said. I know everyone thinks I am. I just don't like answering their questions. Later that night, as he lay on his cot, Stanley reconsidered the deal he had made with Zero. Getting a break every day would be a relief, but he knew X-Ray wouldn't like it. He wondered if there might be some way Zero would agree to dig part of X-Ray's hole as well. But then again, why should he? I'm the one that's teaching Zero. I need I'll have the energy. I'll have the energy. Uh, 
Sorry, guys. I'm the one who took the blame for the sunflower seeds. I'm the one who Mr. Sir is so mad at. He closed his eyes and images of the warden's cabin floated inside his head. Her red fingernails. Mr. Sir writhing on the floor. Her flowered makeup kit. He opened his eyes. He suddenly realized where he'd seen the gold tube before. He'd seen it in his mother's bathroom. He'd seen it again in the warden's cabin. It was half of a lipstick container. K. B. K. B. He felt a jolt of astonishment. His mouth suddenly formed the name Kate Barlow, and he wondered if he really, if it really could have belonged to the Kissin Outlaw. Ooh. Let's see where the next chapter takes us.